Okay, hi guys, it's Denise. I'm back. Uh, we're going to make a 3D bow on a nail form today. So we're just going to use a form that a nail was on. Just the plastic backing, not the, not the like um, dull side, but the shiny side. And we are going to use just some monomers, some acrylic that I made. And I'm again using a 3D brush from Organic Nails. So you're going to pick up your bead and you want kind of a, a nice size bead to work with. So sometimes when I use a smaller like 3D art brush, I have to get two little beads. So you may have to, depending on the size of your brush, that's okay. All right, so we got a little bead here and we're going to pat this down. For those of you that watched my video before this, um, you want to work it into kind of a, a diamond. I guess you could maybe use a square shape too if you wanted to. It's probably the same difference. Okay. And at this point, we're just going to get like an idea of like a square or diamond shape. And then we're going to start patting it down. When we're patting this down, guys, we want the acrylic to be even. So when you're looking at it from where you're sitting, you want to kind of make sure that, you know, it's not really thick on one side or kind of lumpy or like wavy in the center. Um, that's the reason we just keep kind of going. I know it looks redundant, but we keep going around, turning it, patting, turning, patting, because we want to see it from all angles because we want the finished product obviously to be um, around the same thickness. And if you look at it right now, I don't know if you can see it. It's, you know, kind of uh, the same thickness, but I can tell from where I'm sitting on this side that on this side here is a little bit thicker. So we're just going to keep working with it because it's, you know, it's going to, it's setting a little bit as we're doing this and we have to get it to where it's workable, where it's not going to stick to the brush anyway. So you have a little bit of time. Okay. So. What we got here then is our, our little diamond um, square-like shape. And it's not quite square. I guess it is more like a diamond. I don't want to mislead you. So I thought maybe you could probably do either or, but I don't know. Maybe try it. Let me know if it worked. Um, okay, so we have here our little diamond. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this corner and tack it to that corner right there. So you're just going to get your brush wet, go under this side, work it to the center here. When it gets there and you've got it lifted and it's work manageable, you're going to take your point and tack it to your point. Okay. Now at this point, I usually use a cuticle pusher, the opposite end, this, um, where's my camera? I usually use this and kind of just kind of score the center here. And then what you want to do, guys, is you want to get up in here, make sure these are rounded. That one is. But if you can tell this one here, it kind of wants to close. So I'm going to get in there and just open this one up just enough that it looks like the bow is raised, just like that. And some of these, I you know, I will get really extreme with these and really like make these pronounced. But on this this video, guys, I'm just gonna keep it pretty simple because I just want you know to show you guys how to use um, how to make these little bows. So we're gonna move this one over to the side here. I'm just gonna let it set there. We're going to go ahead and we are going to get another bead. Always making sure, guys, that you keep your brushes clean. Each time you, you, know, you get the um, acrylic, wipe whatever's off that and try to keep the tips of your brushes as nice as you can. This is really wet. I have moved spots from where I taped the last video because I thought there was like shadows in there. 
So you want to just make your square. Oh. And don't worry about stuff like that because we can always start over if we have to. And this one's not looking like a square, is it? If you run into something like this where it starts just looking all kind of wacky, go ahead and flat it down, flatten it down again. Okay, because what's happening is your, your acrylic is probably just wet and it's not wanting to cooperate. So then once you pat it down, we're back in business. Like I said, just keep turning it because you want to make sure that the whole square is going to be even. Okay? Just like this. And this side is not, it's higher. So I have learned to kind of, as I, I pat it down, to push to one side or another. And if that doesn't make sense to you guys now, if you enjoy doing this and you start doing it quite often, eventually you'll, you know, you'll know what that means and you will instinctively probably do it too. Um, again, we are just going around trying to make it perfect. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're just trying to get it as good as we can. Okay, so this is probably, I know it doesn't look totally even on this side, and you kind of have to use your judgment after a while once it starts setting to know, okay, do I just need to, you know, fold it at this point, or can, you know, do I need to ditch this one, can I make it work? We're going to try to make this one work, guys. So, this is the side, obviously, that's not wanting to cooperate, and it looks like it's a little bit smaller. So we're going to take this and fold it over to that, because what's under here isn't going to matter once we're done. So don't, never feel like, oh gosh, I can't get a diamond, and this just isn't working, and I'm not going to try it. Try it. You know, what's the worst that could happen? It doesn't fold over evenly, and it doesn't look right, and you know what? You can say, I tried, and before I just ditched it, I did the best I could. And, you know, now I'm going to throw it out if it doesn't work. If it does work, saved you some time. So, we're going to go with this and see if we can make this work. We're going to wet this um, cuticle pusher again. Or, not wet it. Boy, I've got so much to work on as far as these videos because I'm just really tripping up on my words. Again, <laughs> again we're going to make sure these are open. Okay. And this side's definitely not. So this is the angle here that didn't want to work with us. And sometimes if it's wet enough or if it's still workable, I will try to like soften this a little bit. This one's really not cooperating. And this may be a great one for me to show you guys how to, you know, just either make this work or not make it work. So uh, what I'll do is I'll try to just soften it and like make it better. But it's open. Oh, I bent it too far. Okay, it's open. I can't wait till I get my tripod. And I will make more videos like this, you know, so don't feel like this is the only one and it's just, it's not good quality and you can't see it. I apologize for that. Um, and there's the other one. So what we didn't think was going to work, we're going to make work or we're going to try to. Okay, now we're going to lift this one here, and we're going to turn it around. There's no right or wrong side either, so if you like the way it looks one side or the other, you're, you're fine to go ahead and just turn it. Now, what we have here is our two sides. They're relatively close in size. This one is a little bit smaller, so at this point, you could go ahead and use this side or if you're like me, a perfectionist at times, there are times definitely that I would not use these together because I would think, oh, that's just not close enough. But really, they are pretty close. So let's go ahead and we're going to get a tiny little bead and we're going to put it right in the center. Now, I'm not using this as the center of my bow. I'm actually using this to just kind of reinforce where they are meeting together. So I'm kind of just pushing, you know, the acrylic up underneath there. Now we're going to take, um, probably should move these out of the way so I keep, don't keep sticking my hand in your face. 
Okay, we're going to take our acrylic and we're going to get a smaller bead. And we're just going to, again, pat this one down into like a, a rectangle shape. Maybe a little longer than a rectangle. Coming up both sides. Again, we want to kind of keep these um, the same thickness, the same width. And all of this comes with time. My first few bows, I really just thought, you know what, I'm never going to be able to do this. And I didn't know what I was doing wrong, and I was getting really frustrated. And it just takes time to learn. The other thing I didn't realize was the brushes I was using, they just weren't conducive to making, you know, 3D art the way I wanted to. So, you know, brushes are real important, guys. Um, I typically use an organic nails one. Uh, this, this one here, it doesn't even have the words on it anymore. My next runner-up would probably be the Crystal Nails 3D Mini brush, and then I have always got one or two Pure Color um, 3D art brushes around because they were the first ones that I bought that did work. Uh, so I've just been faithful to them as well, uh, and they they really do work, and they're pretty inexpensive, maybe ten bucks on eBay. So you know, check them out if you guys can afford one or you know want one. Okay, we've got our little um, rectangle shape and we're going to center it right in the middle. Okay, and we're going to tuck the top in. Okay, we're going to flatten the front a little bit. And then you're going to turn your form around and you're going to tuck the bottom one in. just like this and I want you guys to let me know these are kind of small bows but if you would like to see me make larger bows so that you could see better um, I, I definitely would have no problem doing that I you know that's not a problem so okay now we've got our bow and we've made it solely on like an Arabella form, like this. So I want to let this set, and I'm going to show you the difference between these. I've got one that I've already done from a video that I didn't like the way it, you know, had turned out. So I'm just going to show you that one. This was done on a form as well. And can you see my nail? Sorry, guys, it looks awful. Um, can you see how it goes straight across here? When you go to set that on your nail, I'm going to hold it with this nail. If you can see, you're going to have to fill this with acrylic because I promise you this is going to get stuck in your hair when you go to take a shower or something because it really is sitting high off of the finger. I mean, I can put this cuticle thing right underneath it. Whereas if you use Arabella Forms, show you this one it's now sitting flush with the nail and you know like uh, if you've seen my first video I explained that these Arabella forms come in a pack of I think it's 20 and they have different sizes they're 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 um, not they're not numbered I'm sorry they they have each size has a letter and there's two sizes and you know what you can typically do is if you use tips on your fingers which I don't I sculpt everything but you, I keep tips here for people that I do some their nails sometimes. And um, you can match the Arabella form up with a tip to get an idea of um, what size Arabella form you should use. And then you can really custom make these to fit just your nails. Uh, when I make them for other people, I ask them, you know, to fit themselves with a tip and let me know what size they use because then we can go ahead and, you know, just make them their size. So, okay, if you like this video, um, hit like. If you want to see more tutorials about how to make 3D art, um, subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. My next project is I'm making acrylic, uh, colored, colored acrylic out of chalks. 
I bought artist chalks off eBay and I am just really happy with the bright vibrant colors that I'm getting from them so I'm going to do a tutorial about that and I'm also going to do a tutorial tutorial about how to make 3d goldfish so if you want to see those keep an eye on what's going on on my channel thanks for watching guys bye